I don't think there's a plant more suited to life in a terrarium than a fern and in this video I'm going to share with you what I think the five best ferns for use in a terrarium are. For the best plant and terrarium advice subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be the first to know when I upload a new video every Thursday. Fern number one, Ostroblechnum penamarina, also known as Blechnum penamarina. I was kindly given a clump of this beautiful fern a few weeks back when I was walking at Old Court Nurseries and Picton Gardens in Colwall. I placed a small piece of it into this terrarium and I placed the rest of it outside of my garden to see how they both fared. The piece I put in my terrarium immediately took and started to push out new growth. I really love the way this fern looks and it has a creeping habit that in time will form a dense carpet. I'm still in the early days of testing this fern out, but because it looks so cool and took so well in such a short space of time, I felt it deserved a place on this list. Fern number two, Hemionitis ariflora. This is a beautiful, unusual fern with heart-shaped leaves on the end of wiry stems. Hemionitis ariflora, also known as the heart fern, is becoming easier to get in the UK. I've only ever grown this fern terrestrially and it performs really well in a human environment. It doesn't enjoy drying out like most ferns, but equally keeping it in sodden soil is an absolute no-go. The plant itself stays quite small, but each leaf can get quite large, especially in lower light settings. You can remedy this by pinching back older leaves to the base as that will encourage the plant to push out new growth. One interesting feature of this fern is the way it propagates itself. Once the plant is established, it produces baby plants at the base of a mature leaf. As soon as these show roots, they can be removed to start new plants. Fern number three, Nephrolepis cordifolia duffii. If you've followed me for some time, I bet that you're not surprised to see this plant on the list. It's one of my most reliable plants and I use it so often. Commonly known as the lemon button fern because of the pleasant aroma that is released when the leaves are touched, this little fern is suitable for use in terrariums of all sizes. It divides well and can be kept small by pinching out the older, larger fronds. Like most ferns, it does not enjoy drying out, so keeping the soil at a steady, slightly moist level will keep this plant happy. This is one of the most reliable terrarium plants that I use. Here are some examples of it in my work. Fern number four, Terrace quadriorita tricolor. I think that's how you say it, but I'm not entirely sure. This plant also goes by the common name, the tricolor fern, because of the different color tones the leaves show at different stages of growth. This is a wonderful terrarium fern, but it does do better in slightly larger containers because each leaf can get up to quite a few inches long. This terrace fern, like many others, does not enjoy drying out and enjoys a humid environment. Though, I've also found that it enjoys a good amount of airflow. If I leave this fern totally sealed in a closed terrarium for a few days, usually some of the leaves die back. Now this isn't a massive problem because the fern will always push out new growth. However, this doesn't happen when I increase the airflow. Here are a few examples of this fern in my work. What is your favorite fern to use in a terrarium? Let me know in the comment section below. Fern number five, Perosia numularifolia. Last but certainly not least is the beautifully petite epiphytic creeping button fern. Unlike terrestrial ferns, which need to be divided at the base to be propagated, epiphytic ferns push roots out as they creep along and are much easier to take cuttings from. I bought this plant back in December 2019 and fast forward to August 2021, I have taken dozens of cuttings from it. The fact that it propagates so easily is a wonderful quality for a rare and expensive plant. 
Although this fern naturally grows on trees and rocks, it also does well in the ground, but make sure you use a good quality, well-draining substrate as it doesn't like its roots consistently wet. Equally, with most ferns, as I've said a few times in this video, it doesn't like to dry out, so finding a balance is key. My substrate mix, which incorporates bonsai mediums, seems to be perfect for growing this fern terrestrially. An additional tip, don't be afraid to experiment with some of the ferns in the outdoor section at a garden centre. I've done this many times, especially in larger terrarium builds, and many of them have succeeded. One of the great joys of this hobby is succeeding with experiments, and I encourage you to do as much of that as possible. So those are my top five ferns for a terrarium. If you have any to add or think that I missed some, let me know in the comments section. If you'd like to discuss this or any other topic further, feel free to drop me an email or a DM on social media. I'd also like to personally invite you to join my beginner-friendly Facebook discussion group. It's called Terrarium Group and all the links are in the description below. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by giving me a like, subscribe and comment with what you enjoyed most about it. I love reading your feedback and I'll see you in the next video.